Welcome to another exciting Sunday night episode of the Josh Cast. But at that that Josh Cast, it's a beautiful day, Josh Cast. Anxiety's here to stay, Josh Cast. Bladder condition won't go away, Josh Cast. Oy vey. Oy vey, oy vey, Josh Cast. I was going to take the day off of podcasting, but I found myself addicted to doing it. I'm addicted to podcasting. That's, it might have been, I'll tell you something. It's healthier for me to be addicted to podcasting, but it's healthier for anyone listening to podcasting for me to be addicted to sugar. I think this podcast is going to damage people. I really do. And to that I say, I'm sorry. But how are things? Um, I, I, the other reason why I wanted to take a break is I feel like I've been screaming a lot and I, I wanted to give my voice a rest. So maybe I can do a more subdued podcast. But will, but will that destroy the energy? What do you think, Randall? If he takes the energy out of the podcast, will that destroy the energy of the podcast? Excellent question. If you'll follow me into the lab, I'll show you my analysis of the situation. Yes, I will follow you into the lab. I didn't know we had a lab. I just installed it yesterday. This way. Cool, you got you got uh, the the swishy door thing. Yes. The last thing I want in my lab is doorknobs. I am, after all, a genius scientist, an inventor of uncomparable genius. You said genius twice. I was hoping you'd maybe say uh, another word that meant genius, just to vary it up a little bit. You're getting repetitive. Did I say I was a writer? Did I say I was a liberal arts major? No, I'm a scientist. Genius. That's the only word I need. It's the only word I know. That means what it means. Where was I? Ah, yes. Will Josh Cast be as successful if Josh is low energy vocally as it will if he was high energy vocally? Let us check the podcast stats. According to our information, Josh Cast is getting approximately 10 to 20 downloads per day. And that tells us one thing. This show is not profitable. In fact, I'm fairly certain it's costing anyone who's involved with it more money than it is to produce. We're dealing with an epic failure, a failure of epic proportions, and as a result, whether it's low energy or high energy, it doesn't matter. One way or another, this podcast represents the last gasp of a frustrated and tortured young Jewish man as he descends into middle age and ultimately into the obscurity of time. By the way, I have sugar-free soda water if you want some. I'm good, thank you. Uh, all right, well, I'll I'll let him know that we can proceed without uh, without uh, having to scream. Um, I won't tell him why, though. I, I don't want him. I don't want him to be heartbroken. Do what you will. If you need me, I'll be in the lab. Hey, Josh, we just consulted with the lab, and uh, y- y- there's not going to be any problem. You can, you, can, uh, you can do this one low energy. It shouldn't affect the ratings. Okay, thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. Right, so uh, where was I? Um, you know, it's funny. Today, today's Sunday. It's my day off. Uh, Sundays are hard for me. I think because I have 
the if I if I have nothing to do, then I start really reminding myself of where I'm at in life, and I get frustrated because I'm not where I want to be in life. Um, I do want to be in a relationship, but I want to be in a relationship and have a successful career at the same time. I don't want to be in the relationship before I get into the career. And I've, a lot of people have told me that's a, you know, a stupid way of looking at it, but it just seems to me that if I'm you know, trying to put all my energy into a career, how do I then... You know, the, the, I'm worried the relationship's going to suffer if that happens. He does realize what he's discussing at this moment is a moot point. After all, there aren't women lining up at the door to fall in love with Joshua. Excuse me, Aphrodite. Yes, Randall. Um, got a message from uh, the other gods. Um, they're, uh, they're a little worried about uh, your work lately. They're worried about my work lately? Lately? You mean to tell me they have no idea how much I've been screwing things up for the past, well, for all of human history, in terms of relationships and love? It's been an absolute disaster, and they're only now noticing I'm almost insulted. Yes, well, the, it, it's it's actually not the the love part that uh, has them worried. They, um, well, there's there's some concern over Cupid. What 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 about my Cupid? What what's wrong? Well, and and by the way, if we're going to go with the ancient Greek names, he shouldn't be Cupid. We sh he should be Eros. Yeah, but I, I think Cupid's more recognizable. Well, okay, fine. We'll just mix our Greek and Roman mythology. That's that's no problem. That's great. Let's let's just further destroy our educational system in this country. Let's just further throw history out the door. That's focusing on the main problem here. Um, so, Cupid, Eros, whatever. Well. There, there's a general consensus that um, th that his wings might be too small. Um, he n nobody's ever seen him actually fly. We've seen him fall a lot, a lot, and uh, w we're wondering if if maybe you could uh, find it in your heart to make the wings um, actually. Uh, um, uh, work. I'm sorry. Do you have a problem with my creation? I'm. I don't even know if you created Cupid. How much, or Eros? Did you create Cupid or Eros? I. I should be. I should know more about the mythology. I. Uh. Yeah. I. Th I think I did. I could. I. Th ah. It's been so long. But it, this is not the point. The point here is. Cupid is supposed to have cute little wings. That's what makes him Cupid. If I give him actual giant wings, people might confuse him for Pegasus. I, I don't think uh, people will do that because there are other differences between Cupid and Pegasus. Namely, Pegasus is a horse and Cupid is a, a, a human, well, at least a human-looking baby. So I I think that your confusion there, but from afar, they might be confused. And the last thing I want is someone who's trying to attack Pegasus, accidentally killing my baby Cupid slash Eros. Therefore, I want to make his silhouette as different as possible. Okay, so if that's the case, can you get can could he perhaps? Could you not make him have to fly? Because he he can't. There's aerodynamics uh, involved, which, or I mean, could you endow him with the power to just float? Well, that wouldn't make any sense. He doesn't need to just float. He has wings. Yes, but they're wings that don't work. They work well enough. Well enough for. 
so you just want this baby to walk around everywhere, to attempt to fly and fall, and continually fall and hurt himself. He's, he's immortal. You know, I, I'm beginning to see why the divorce ratio is 60% in this country. I think I'm beginning to see the flaw here. The wings stay. Well, all right, can we at least maybe get someone to help Cupid, who has a better wingspan, who can fly, who can actually fly successfully, and maybe that would help with the uh, the amount of couples uh, getting divorced. Maybe that would that would help keep more couples together. Could we possibly? Could I suggest that? Who do you have in mind? Well, I mean, you mentioned Pegasus. Could maybe, maybe he could ride Pegasus, but that would look ridiculous. Why would someone with ri- wings have to fly on top of someone else with bigger wings? That's just. That can't work. All right. Um, could we get him a plane? You want to get Cupid a plane? You want to put Cupid on a 747? Tell me, will he be first class, or will he be sitting back with the rabble? I'm, I was thinking more of a private plane. Oh, 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 I see. Because he's an 80s Wall Street executive who's going to do cocaine. That's what you think my Cupid is? Slash Eros? Randall, I can't have this conversation anymore. I have to go back and examine this Josh problem. What's the problem with Josh? Well, he's complaining about being alone, and yet he does nothing to change his state. And I'm tired of taking the blame for it, so I'm debating how I shall punish him. Don't you think uh, the absence of sex and love is punishment enough? Oh. Now that's the first intelligent thing you've said all day. All right, I'm going to go eat pineapples now. You do that. Where was I? Loneliness, right. Um, I don't... uh, I don't... uh, know what to do about that. I want to just let something happen naturally. (laughs) Uh, Which is... I don't know, kind of like... The polar bears and the melting polar ice caps going. I'm sure this will work itself out. I'm sure we don't have to possibly kill all the humans in order to survive. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, that that got unexpectedly political. But I um I don't want to date. I don't want to put. Ah. The funny thing, you know, the funny thing is, is that um, I'm, I'm trying to brainstorm ways that I can uh, have a career as a comedian. How about that? And I was like listing all the places. These are all the places I should try to get in. And then I got really tired and I got depressed and I went, "Ugh, I don't, I don't want to have to do this." And then I'm, I'm realizing that that's the exact same feeling I get when I think about dating, the going out there and the talking to people and meeting people and and all and the the parking uh maybe that's i mean if if it was if the parking was easier at least then maybe it, then maybe i could i could i could stomach it but maybe i've just got to get over this hump and i got to push myself I just push myself to be on tinder and have a tinder profile that says you know i'm not well so if you're attracted to me, you're not well. And if you're not attracted to me, you're you're right. And see uh, what the result is on that. That could that could definitely be a possibility. That could definitely be a possibility. But I think there was that, uh, that children's book about the kid who got the crayon. And he created an entire world using the crayon. I think it was called the red crayon, the blue crayon. Eros, Cupid, one of, something. But he had a crayon that he could create an entire reality with the, crea- with the crayon. I think the only thing he couldn't create with the crayon is a, is a resume that would be accepted. Well, it says here that you can basically manifest anything using a crayon and you know listen I uh you know that's an interesting attribute but you've 
you know, you've written this resume in crayon. So could you, you know, I, the first thing I would say is, listen, if you want to be, if you want to get a job out there, the first thing you need to do is draw a, you know, a, a pen or better yet, draw a computer and make sure your resume is typed out. And right now you're only purple and you're just an outline. You need to manifest some clothing. Um, people are worried. People think that uh, you might be, I don't know, some kind of a monster or something. A few follow-up questions. How is this possible? I think that's our first question because we're a little concerned about whether or not you might be dabbling in forces in which we as the human race don't quite understand yet. And um, listen, this company, you know, we have to be very careful to maintain a good public profile. And the last thing we want is some kind of environmental disaster in which a crayon-shaped monster suddenly explodes and causes severe radioactive damage. You know, that's not going to look good on our Twitter and social media and, and our Instagram. So, you know, my question to you is, if, if you accept the position, would you be willing to not use the crayon? Other red flags um, on uh, your resume. You literally drew red flags that apparently turned into giant red flags as I was reading the resume, which was terrifying. And um, I'm surprised I didn't get a heart attack. That's, I don't know what your intent was there. I, maybe you were just trying to decorate the resume, but that's not something that you should do again ever. Uh, and I mean, there's, it seems to be, there's no, you know, there's no college education here. And frankly, I, I would be worried that, uh, that if you showed me a degree, I would be concerned that you had manifested the degree. So the, you know, in these references that you gave, I called both of the references and they're terrified of you. They think that they're afraid that you could kill them with, with a crayon, essentially. Uh, and um, I'm a little terrified of you. In fact, I'm so terrified of you, I, I think perhaps maybe we should just give you the job. Just don't don't kill me. Please, don't kill me. Well, that was a fun moment, wasn't it? How are the ratings? How do you think the ratings are? Yeah, okay. So that's happening. Um... What else is happening? What else? Homelessness situation is getting worse in downtown Burbank. I see more and more of them. And I'm not doing a, a gosh darn thing to help them. I can't believe I just said gosh darned. And I've addressed this in past podcasts. And I just... I just don't know what to do. And then, I, you know, there's the... the, the you know the the families getting separated and the the uh, the camps, the immigration camps. And I get a text saying, "Hey, do you want to go? You know, march for this on Tuesday." And and I just it, that makes me even more. What I don't know if me marching is going to help. I don't think Donald Trump is going to look at me marching and go look at the resolve on that young Jewish man the way he breathes heavily because he's out of shape. He's really not even marching. He's just kind of shuffling. I think I have to make a change. Thanks to Joshua Snyder's shuffle, I am going to change my ways. I just don't foresee that happening. I really don't. And I just, I feel a sense of, of hopelessness. As I was saying, I, I just feel a sense of um, pure and total hopelessness. I see. Well, that shouldn't be a problem because the rest of us Care Bears can bring you back to the Care Bear smile. I, here's the other thing. I don't, I don't want you to call me a Care Bear anymore. Uh, I just want to be a bear. I don't want to have that expectation placed on me of having to care. I don't always care. I get tired of caring, okay? All right. What if we called you a share bear? You really get on my nerves, okay? I know, and I know that everything you're doing is coming from a place of love, but can I just say that sometimes it feels like a 
a little bit of an act. I just have a feeling that deep down, you're as much of a grizzly bear as anyone else. That you don't, that there's a part of you, maybe it's only 1%, but there's a 1% part of you that wants to rip off the face of the person you're trying to care about and eat them and then sit under a tree and just enjoy the digestive process of having eaten that annoying person. I feel like you feel that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, that's another reason why I hate you because either you have no self-awareness or you're in denial and either way I don't want you physically near me. So here's how we're going to play this. I'm See this rainbow on my on my stomach? I'm going to cover that, okay? I'm going to cover that with uh, just a sticker. And the sticker is going to be a sticker of Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, and I'm going to just spend a few weeks in the cafes, just chill out, and I don't want any of you to find me. I, I need to not care for a while. I need, I need to be cut off. I need to not care. I care too much, and... Uh, and the, you may not know it from the narcissism, but I care too much, and it's too much. So I need to just do that. I'm working on a novel right now. It's uh, a sequel to The Stranger. And uh, in this sequel, uh, instead of shooting a guy for no reason uh, and using a pistol, he uses a rocket launcher. And I think that it really speaks to the concept of existentialism. Hopefully in a way that does homage to what Albert Camus was doing without, um, I say, without trying to necessarily emulate him. Uh, I want to honor him, but I don't want to copy him. Does that, hopefully all of this makes sense to you. But anyway, whatever you're about to say, don't say it. I would rather you don't say anything, turn around and walk in the opposite direction for as long as you possibly can. You can go back to your house or wherever it is you, you know, exist, or you can keep walking beyond that. You know, the, the second option would be more preferable to me because you annoy me so much. But the first option is totally fine. Because even though I am a textbook narcissist, I don't quite think I'm yet a sociopath. But you can test that if you stay. I think we're... Uh... Wow, we're accomplishing quite a lot. 22 minutes. Well, that's been a, a, the weekend edition of the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Hope this laid back energy uh, didn't uh, didn't cause any troubles on your end. And uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and may, let's let's start doing the social media. Follow me at Nerdy Virgin on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Josh Cast. Uh, you can also find it uh, on uh, my YouTube page. Uh, and um, you can find it on my Facebook page. Um, just search Joshua Snyder or Nerdy Virgin and you will find it. There we go. Look at that. Getting some marketing done. Yes. All right. End podcast. <laughs>